let's talk about adults playing pretend. Hello everyone, welcome back to my podcast. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's podcast, I normally have a tea. Girl, we're just drinking some water today. Okay, so grab your little water bottles. This is gonna be a fun one. I think it's gonna be super relaxed and chill. So let's get into it. Basically, I've been thinking about imagination, playtime, playing pretend, adulthood. What does it mean to be an actual adult? Do you wanna tell Joe Byron right now? What's up, baby? Name one positive thing that you respect in one another. I respect his children. His children are incredibly able and devoted, and I think that says a lot about Donald. Well, I consider her statement about my children to be a very nice compliment. I don't know if it was meant to be a compliment, but it is a great. I'm very proud of my children. I will say this about Hillary. She doesn't quit. She doesn't give up. I respect that. These women, some of them had issues with it. Some of them didn't have issues at all, but they're not changing their votes. Well, it says a lot. One, it says that um, I definitely live in a bubble. And the bubble that I live in is one where sexual assault and rape culture is not okay. And that's a bubble that I never want to climb out of. I never want to get to a point where someone's words about harmful and offensive touching and groping are okay. They're not okay. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, and I, I, if you I listen really, to the victim, there's you talk about listen to the so victims. It's just so ironic. The selected Clinton's victims. This Clinton's no, victims. No, no, exactly. I'm, not, no I'm sorry. And Bill Clinton's not running for office. The selective outrage that the left is okay with Hillary Clinton, who put private investigators on people who had viable sexual assault claims. Kaylee, it's selective outrage. Kaylee, and you know what? Not. People see through it because that same NBC poll that was taken before the debate, Kaylee. before the apology, Kaylee. guess what it shows? 60%. You do not think that this video is disqualifying or facilitating it last night, and she was definitely Kaylee, and silent. you're wrong. She did not deny it. You're, but you know why? Because it's effing ridiculous, dude. Yeah, it's so ridiculous. Play That's crazy. Just, all you have to do is play, okay. play the video. I can't believe y'all. I really Clinton. can't. Meanwhile, Roger Stone is paying $2,500 okay, to... of another victim, and that's what you all are going to be a proud uh, be proud Let of? Let me bring in Paris and Margaret. Bottle Paris, victims? Give Margaret. me a break. A while back, we talked with our father, my siblings and I, and our parents in general, my mom and dad, about how old they felt. And my parents parents both said, oh, I feel like I'm in my 20s. I have so much I still need to do. They're both in their 60s. And I look at my parents and how they are. And my dad reminds me so much of Tim the Toolman Taylor, only Middle Eastern and uh, a little a little different, but same. Like 90s dad likes to do things, likes to tinker around the house, likes to do, like likes to be productive, likes to help out and also likes to be goofy. Like he likes to play around. He just, oh my gosh, he just bought a Jeep for the kids. So my brother, one of my brothers has uh, two boys and a girl. They're children they're five and under but my dad bought them like this motorized jeep and I was like is this for them or for you and he's like mm, who's to say and I'm like this is fun this is cute I like seeing adults want to have fun I like seeing adults being goofy the last man on the teeter-totter is the winner it's gonna be a bloodbath I have this idea that like boomers or people that are older than 40 are adults like adult adults as if I'm not an adult adult even though I'm in my 30s I make my own money I live on my own I do all these things it doesn't quite feel the same as when I look at like a an adult adult and then I started to realize I'm not really sure that's accurate I think it just looks sort of different but I wanted to explore it with you guys so I am a part of you know online communities I hang out at on TikTok and what I've noticed is that people in their 30s let's say 35 let's say tw let's say 30 to 40 People with money, people who grew up um, with the 80s and the 90s, people who had most of their teens or sort of adultinghood in their 2000s. There are people who grew up with, um, if you grew up in the States, let's assume, right? Because I can't speak for any other country because I grew up here. I grew up in the States. For me, at least, it meant that we were kind of feeling trapped and sort of obligated to fulfill some sort of boomer fantasy about adulthood. And then we ended up all making money and doing sort of not that plan. Yes, some of us have houses. Some of us have families and kids. But a lot of us are LARPing, playing D&D, &D, hanging out on video games, playing in VR, on discords, hanging out on YouTube, or Social groups, the way we spend our time and our money are often in places where we're at, you know, we know we're, we're actively using our imagination and pretending. Even BDSM and communities in which I roll with, like BDSM communities, it's a pretend community. We are playing pretend, right? Like we are dressing up and being like, you are my slave and I am your dom. And like we're doing this thing where I am the master. Like it's a game and it can feel very real because games often do, much like the squid games, right? I think about squid games and how it is a game, but it's a scary game because it has real life implications. Well, 
don't most of the things that we do have those implications? Even in BDSM, you can run into a predator in our community and they could end up hurting you. That's a consequence, a real world consequence to playing pretend in a, dun- in a dungeon. But of course, I mean, assault happens everywhere. But in particular, the element of pretend is really interesting to me because I want to explore how much we can sort of expand on that. What if um, I looked at politicians as playing pretend because they're basically like, their career is to lie. Uh, Senator, we have a lot of competitors. Who's your biggest? Mm. Is it an alternative to Facebook in the private sector? Uh, yes, Senator. The average American uses eight different apps. Is Twitter the same as what you do? It overlaps with a portion of what we do. You don't think you have a monopoly? Uh, it certainly doesn't feel like that to me. Okay. <laughs> Like, are they playing pretend? Are they playing the pretend leader? Are they playing the pretend um, helper? Are they playing the pretend good do- doer? Are they playing the pretend superhero? Or are politicians not actually playing pretend anything because we as constituents know they lie and they we also know that we want our leaders to lie to us much like we want our parents and partners to lie to us is that also a form of pretend wanting people to sort of coax our feelings and make us feel better about our decisions like sometimes I think politicians are just there for us to feel better about our voting habits or how we participate in our communities don't want to stoke envy the goal of Tucker show isn't to challenge the elite. It's to make sure you never realize who they are. To get you so mad at atheists, feminists, immigrants, millennials, trans people, college students, pot smokers, vegans, the NFL, Brooklyn witches, and Lena fucking Dunham, that you don't get mad at the people who are actually in charge. If you care about America, you ought to oppose the exploitation of Americans. For now, those leaders will have to be Republicans. There's no option at this point. Tucker Carlson isn't a populist. He's a safety valve. A way to make sure that if the hungry peasants in the village get angry, they don't take it out on the party giving tax cuts to him or his multi-billionaire boss. You're his bitch. I'm 100% his bitch. Whatever Mr. Murdoch says, I do. I would be honored if he would cane me the way I cane my workers. I mean, civilization itself sort of maintains its um, civility by pretend when we play nice with our neighbors, when we play nice by having small talk, when we don't engage with people in an honest and authentic way as to avoid conflict all these are good things I'm not saying they're bad I'm saying I just want to explore them in a way that makes us question how 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 in and in what way this might impact our what we're doing right so I believe we're humans on earth evolved over time this is a belief not a knowing I assume some of the theories on evolution or the theory of evolution is pretty good but you know we're still we got a lot of questions still for the universe and so I'm open to the idea of a god but what does even it mean that a god might exist what if it's a god that's sort of indifferent to humans existing does that mean I have to change my life if a god exists when we play pretend in religion when we believe something hard enough that we cannot prove the ultimate form of pretend right um, I think that we run the risk of stopping people from living their their authentic one life to fulfillment because we limit others by how we play pretend. Does that make sense? That sentence was super jumbled. But basically, if you're willing to believe something so hard that cannot be proven, basically pretend, I want to imagine that the thing I'm fantasizing about could be real, right? I'll pretend. But it's a pretend that's so authentic from the from the participants perspective that it becomes like a truth right who do you think can live in each other's society easier liberals in a majority muslim society or muslims in a majority liberal society what do you mean by easier you figure it out you can figure it out what however you who's gonna be means. happier who's gonna the I'm people not asking who are gonna, gonna be happier happy. let's say no, okay no, well, let's you, say, you didn't define easier for me so i'll have to define it for myself okay sure we'll say happier yeah, Muslim, uh, liberals living in a Muslim society. Do you think they, everyone living think, in a Muslim society is going to be happier? Do you think yeah. LGBTQ people would feel the same? What do you mean by LGBTQ people? Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, or queer people. Do you think they would be happier living in a Muslim society or a liberal society? A Muslim society. Why? Because this is, as I said, Muslim, Islam is preserving marriage family, community, belief in God. These are things that are biologically rooted. LGBT, you know, we can talk about whether that's biologically rooted or not, but the basis for uh, these four things I mentioned, they're universal. They've been seen it, this has you know, nothing so to do with universally. my question, right? So, yes. Yeah, so, no, it does, because human beings, there's an d- objective answer to what makes human beings happier. What makes them psychologically happier so do you think it would is look- correlated to these four relationships. So if they're in a society that preserves these four kinds of relationships and institutions, they're going to be, by definition, happier. 
Do you think a Muslim society would seek to eliminate LGBTQ people? So Islamic law has um, uh, prohibited same-sex behavior. And also has rules for killing gay people if they're caught by enough witnesses, yeah? Uh, yes, absolutely. I've discussed this many times, mm -hmm. as do other religions, as do all traditional well, I'm not arguing for societies. other religions, I'm arguing in favor of liberalism right now. No, because now. you're trying to present this case of liberalism versus Islam, and I'm trying to reframe it in the proper context well, you're of you're liberalism to... versus all societies, all religions, and all cultures. Okay, we can do that. that because... We can do that as well. But I, do you think that I'm going to defend another religion that would try to kill gay people? Do you think that would be a, an argument that this I would This debate take? is not about you defending Islam. I'm not trying to defend trying Islam, to defend, I'm attacking it right now. You should try to defend so, liberalism. And, and that's hard for me because I try really hard to live in a, in a very clear reality of this is pretend time, this is not pretend time. And I'm not really sure if people are thinking about their lives that way. It sounds pretty rude, right? Oh, your God is pretend, so you're playing pretend. Sounds really condescending. But I think about it in relation to gender as well. I think gender is a spiritual concept. Like there's our sex, right? Our biological sex that can't be refuted. We are biological creatures. We have like strict sort of um, things around that. But at the same time, it's fluid in its own right because science is fluid. So we have to be aware of that and open to it. But really gender as a concept is a imagination, spiritual venue, a way, sort of a place to exist in, in which I can pretend and explore variations of my gender. And I think that is very cool and interesting. We have heard of people who identify as non-binary using the pronoun they or their instead of he or she. Um, but what about this, having a they be instead of a baby? It's a new term that some parents are using to show that they're bringing up their offspring gender neutral. It's a very interesting situation. Um, I ju just tell us a little bit about um, Sparrow. Are you able to even sure. say how Sparrow was, you know, what gender Sparrow was born? Or is that something you avoid talking about altogether? Well, you know, the whole point of gender is that we don't know Sparrow's gender yet, um, as far as what their anatomy is. Uh, we do choose to keep that private, you know, to a, a short list of uh, caregivers. Now, this was um, not the situation, was it, with um, Hazel, who was your first child, because Hazel, yes, you did correct. bring up in, um, you know, as a, as a little girl. Well, I did assign binary pronouns to Hazel initially, yes. Uh, and then when they were older, they articulated a preference for using they, them pronouns. Now, I don't know that this is an even objective in the way that I'm saying it. We might find out in 100 years that, like, gender as a pretend concept, a spiritual concept, is also a true concept. God is a pretend concept. An imagination concept could also be a true thing. So we have to be very aware that there could be a, a possibility of this happening. And so it's hard to say that we should live in the most reality when the most reality is in and of itself questionable. I mean, I know I'm a Brittany. I know I'm a human. I know that I'm a girl. I know that I'm a thing that we call human and girl. And, I, and I'm okay with that. I think that I that that matches how I see myself, right? I never question whether or not I'm a woman. I question, uh, I used to question of whether or not I was a good woman. And I think I have made it clear over the years that for me, if you're a woman, then any version of that is the correct version of woman. And so uh, I kind of feel that way when even when people are identifying as women, like sure, whatever, it's a woman, you're identifying as one. But at the same time, I'm okay with like reality checking people and like, you're kind of playing pretend to be a woman, which is fine as well. But I also I think you are a woman because I I can't help but process you as a woman. So like there's a lot of layers in this, right? I think that's where I don't want people to feel like Britney is anti anyone who's playing pretend. I actually am trying to make the argument that I think that I take you I take it seriously that you're playing pretend in any capacity. Even at the dungeon, like when I'm doing a BDSM scene, I take that form of pretending very seriously because we're doing dangerous activities. I'm a masochist. I like adrenaline. I jump out of planes for fun. I like I like to do dangerous things. And in BDSM, that's no different. Like, I don't involve sex in my BDSM, but I involve needles and blood play and masochism and paddling and flogging and punching and things that leave bruises and scarring and things that could put me in the hospital. So I have to be careful um, so, so as to avoid going to the hospital. 
but it feels really real in that moment. I feel spiritually connected to my partners. I feel very seen. I want to cry. I'm, a, I, you know, it evokes emotion. It heals. It sometimes causes damage. Like it's a really healing process playing pretend. It allows us to really give our woes and, and, and pain to the universe or to our partners or to the scene that's happening. I think of prayer this way. How prayer is so beautiful, the, the the consistency of it, the sort of like ritual of it. And then I think about how it is a form of playing pretend because you're just speaking, you know, your words out to the universe and maybe someone's hearing it, maybe they're not. But it's also okay because it's sort of like where faith comes in. The faith, I believe that this could be true, is true, and it makes me feel comforted. The same I think of when um, I think about humans being good, like I do believe I have faith that most humans are good and I don't know that, right? I've only met so many thousands of humans in my lifetime. They're billions, right? But based off of how we've communicated with each other from what I know about the world, the documentaries we've seen, the traveling from one place to another, all of us seemingly interact relatively peacefully throughout the planet and I think that's pretty cool. Obviously, there are pockets of violence. That's what being a human is. It's like openness to the possibility that people could be violent towards each other even on the premise of pretending so like when people have religious wars basically they're both saying hey I'm at like I have an imagination my imagination is telling me that I have faith in this idea being real enough that I'm going to kill you over it and that is fascinating to me because the same people who are like I am logical I read books I am scientific are also the same people who have faith in their imagination so strongly that they're willing to kill people over it. I think this is really interesting for a slew of reasons, but one of the largest criticisms that I receive is that I speak in black and white terms and I'm not open to nuances the, in a way that I appear to be and that I think that I know everything about the universe. And this could be furthest from the truth. The reason I'm advocating for everyone to have the absolute freedom they can have while remaining sort of like a civilization is because I don't know because I am really concerned that a lot of people are very sure about things from gender to religion to to bodily autonomy and my concern is that we are forgetting that a lot of the things we believe in are predicated on imagination and playing pretend. It's kind of funny. Um, I think of sports in this way where football and basketball are a means of economic promise for a lot of underserved communities and that these communities rely on the possibility of that pipeline into success to not only help the individual who's playing that sport, but literal generations of their family. And this is really hard for me to process because in my head, sports are just like a game we play pretend. Like we're playing pretend. We're like, it's an imagination. It's a game. It's like, uh, hey, let's pretend this thing really matters enough to bring in billions of dollars and sell jerseys to people. And then we're going to put people's lives on line, like the line basically in terms of economic promise to like maybe use this as a means of, of um, liberty, right? And it's at the end of the day, like you're just playing a game for a living. It doesn't even matter. Like this game doesn't even matter. And yet there are people like, spending their mortgage basically betting on these games there's people like spending their whole life savings on these games there's people who have literal game rituals they'll like take little rabbit furs and they'll b make traditions out of you know in reaction to I should say or, or or around this like version of playing a game right and I think that's fine I don't think there's any moral issue or like ethical boundary here that we're crossing I think if anything we should just remember that it's a game like life is a game right like life is sort of a game but what kind of game is it? it it's kind of the one we've all created with each other we are participants in this economy we're participants in this global world we're participants in how we all move things forward right if the one percent is limited if the regular people are the majority if the politicians and the corrupt leaders are the minority then how easily swayed has the majority really been and are we actually getting the world we actually wanted in the first place? Like you can keep complaining about the world and the way that it is. But honestly, doesn't it kind of fit into the the pretend version of reality that you're ascribing to because you're allowing it to continue because it's predicated on the game that was given to us by our ancestors? Like people are just doing their best, right? And yeah, there might be some like people out there who are really thinking about it. But I think most people are just kind of like continuing the game of assuming we know because it's better than actually questioning the self. 
So I think about how important this is, though, in a good way, not just a bad way, right? There's a lot of positives to this. I saw on TikTok someone uh, it came across that people were playing a competitive pillow fighting. Round two has begun, and oh. right off the bat, Nunez not wasting any time. Long she is defense. going inside on Volcare and not allowing her to get any sort of momentum at all. Oh, and oh. Nunez throw him off, but Marcus is not slowing down. He knows what the stake. $5,000 on the line, less than a minute and a half to go. This is the finals. And I'm just sitting there like the thing we did at sleepovers, the things I do with my brothers now when I like throw a pillow at their face and laugh, they're doing it competitively and it's very serious. And people take things very seriously like competitive tag or even like just think about it, right? We are making decisions to put value in something that doesn't really impact us in the way that other things could, but it's still important. I'm The Olympics are happening right now, as many of you know. And I, I like watching the Olympics in snippets. I don't sit down to watch anything sports related for longer than a few minutes. Like, I love the X Games, but, like, I just don't have the – like, it's not what fuels me. I'd rather read a book or something, which is not a judgment, by the way. And books are also a form of pretending, right? I, like – I sink into sort of like even philosophy books is a form of pretending in a lot of ways. So, okay. But I'm watching the X Games on TikTok highlights and I'm like really enjoying, or not the X Games, sorry. I'm watching the Olympics. And again, we are all putting tons of money. People said during COVID they were devastated because all the training they were putting their life into, all of the ballerinas I know or ballet dancers, all of the art people I know, all the sports people I know who were just like, wow, I dedicated so many years to preparing for this and now it's not happening. COVID's getting in the way of my dream. And they put a lot of stake into this, like billions of dollars at stake, right, for basketball players and like all these people who had even a moment of shutdown. And that is so interesting to me that we have put our whole livelihood, like people are shaking. People are like, my whole life is meaningless unless I get to do this thing that I've been training to do and other people aren't letting me do it. Like all of these things are just values we're making. We're putting values on these things for ourselves, but they don't mean anything outside of your bubble. Like they don't mean anything. Like they mean only something to you, which is true for all of us, right? Like I look at my friends who are like, I have a friend who's a ballet dancer and like obviously I want her to be a ballet dancer. You have one life. You might as well dance your life away, right? But it's interesting that like for her, she's like, this is so important. I wish like the arts were respected in American educational systems. But the thing is like the arts are only matter to people that the arts impact so like I think music is the greatest thing the world ever gave us I don't think people should have to play music but I think people should maybe experience music but I don't also go like I don't leave my house so like I don't go to a lot of live events I don't really want to leave my house to socialize with people to enjoy a thing I could enjoy in in my house do you get what I'm saying so I'm not really sure that I'm not really sure that we can sit here and mock like LARPers and D&D players for spending too much time wasting their life away with games when I feel like everything we're doing in society is sort of a game. And I'm okay with that game, but I don't really understand the idea that like if this is our one life and we're going to die, there's anything really wrong with spending your life playing video games unless you have different goals, right? Because video games or playing D&D or spending your life streaming is all well and good. It's great. There's no judgment there. But it won't always lead you to the path that you think you're going to get to. Okay, so the last line of thinking that I really have with this that I think is sort of important but not important is how we go about judging people's choices of pretend. Now, that's not to say like even people who are falling in love are sort of playing pretend. Like, oh, I met you on Tinder and I'm in love with you. It's been three months. It's sort of a version of pretend. But they don't mean it to be. People don't mean their lives to be pretend. They, they're very serious about them. But I kind of wonder if that's just a state of mind. Because like when I was in BDSM, I was there every day. It was very important. I actually hated people who treated it casually. And now I'm like, don't care. Because I know ultimately it is a version of playing pretend. And it's only impacting the people in that bubble. Like it doesn't even exist outside the bubble, right? Even Fifty Shades of Grey played pretend as a book to represent BDSM but only represented kink really and parts of BDSM and the BDSM community who takes their 
pretend very seriously was like no this is my lifestyle this means something to me even being a vegan for the sake of like animals not getting tortured is sort of playing pretend as my farm brother brought up like he said he said well vegan foods like the way they're created hurts animals in the long run because of the environmental impact right it's like is it sort of playing pretend that we care about environmental impacts when we are not very environmentally conscious I don't know like I don't want to say that people's lives are meaningless completely because I don't think that's true I think on the macro we are participants in like the planet and we're organisms as much as anything else is and we're doing our best and then on the micro I feel like it impacts us in a very real and concrete way like very very importantly and so we have to pay homage to that and respect that right I don't want to look at people who go to church and think you're just playing pretend so I don't care about you no I care about you a lot I hope you're happy and you find meaning in existence I don't want to look at people who just like play D&D all day as like people who spend their time wasting their life away in a game but like aren't we all kind of wasting time in a game and a game where we think our gender is the most important thing or ethnicity or like our religions and so this game gets escalated to a point of actually causing like people's lives to end which is really scary and so I think what I'm trying to propose is that if we're all kind of playing pretend in a great way would it make society a little less violent to acknowledge that because I feel like as I've become more introspective, I've become less and less violent, less interested in hurting people, less interested in feeling afraid of people. I've become less afraid of myself. I've become I've become just so open to the human experiences like humans are going to human. So we're going to have real human experiences. They're going to hurt us. We're going to feel pain. We're going to cry, but not maybe to the extent we could have before. Before, when I thought the world was happening to me, instead of me being a participant, a real participant in the world, truly enough to hold myself accountable, I was just, I was less, I was less forgiving of people, less forgiving of myself. I expected like this outrageous form of um, um, perfection that again comes out of a place of playing pretend as if humans could be perfect. And so I think I'm saying all of this to say that like playing pretend has a place and a time and I think if we really thought about what we were, humans on a planet, really process that. Like we're literally just people on a planet. I think a lot of us would be less violent. People always ask me, Brittany, like if the world was fives, what would it, what would it look like? The world was fives, like on my philosophy scale of introspection. I would say then that the world would be relatively peaceful. There might be some drama. Maybe somebody has like an affair. But in a world of a five, like what does an affair even mean? Like... Would we even consent to being monogamous? And like if everyone was fives, maybe, maybe people would cohabitate. But like all of the rules we put on ourselves come from a place of wanting the world to be smooth and nice and, 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 and co- like cohabitate, like co- what's the word I want? Uh, mm, uh, mm. We want, I think people genuinely put rules on other people to keep order. And sometimes it comes from a place of being a bully. And I do generally think that the popular kids are sort of in charge and like the rest of us are just like, you're an idiot. But like even in that kind of metaphor of life, like usually the people who end up in charge are the people who do want power and attention and the rest of us go, ugh, we don't want that. And so what ends up happening is that the people we don't want in charge end up being in charge and then we wonder why it is and then we keep voting for them and that's sort of confusing. But it is all sort of made up too. Like there are real world consequences to adults fighting. Like we're always worried about North Korea and Russia and China as Americans. But at the same time, the other world, like the other people in the world are sort of worried about Americans. And we're all kind of worried about each other. And then our like communities are playing popularity games. So like, okay, I got to put down my bottle for this. So like in our in our own homes, there's like a game like the favorite child and like power dynamics. And then we go to school and there's like the popular kids and like the nerd kids, let's say. And then we play for power there. And there are power dynamics and then we grow up and then we go to college and there's power dynamics there. And then we go into politics and there's power dynamics there. And then we zoom out and now we're countries and there's hierarchies there of who's the cool country and who's the loser country and who's doing great for their country and who has the cool fashion and who has. It's like a popularity game and it's all predicated on what? What is it all about? What are we all doing this for? Well, some for religion, which is pretend. Some for like um, a desire to like make world peace and utopia, also pretend. Like that's silly, right? Like we know we we know we're human, unless you don't know you're human. And if you're human, you're flawed. And if you're flawed, there's going to be mistakes. And if there's going to be mistakes, there's going to be chaos. So what are we really trying to do here? Play the ultimate game of pretend, where we think. That we're not all participants in the system. 
Are we going to play an ultimate game of pretend where we all think we're above each other? Are we going to play an ultimate game of pretend where we all think humans should be as introspective as everyone else or be as introspective as you as be introspective as me? Are we going to let people just be as introspective as they want? It's funny in America, in terms of education, we really suck. And we suck because we have a lot of freedom here. And it's funny because I hear all these stories coming out of Japan where like Japanese kids or Asian kids in general are forced to be academically like amazing and they're usually um forced into great um like uh, hold on let me rephrase okay so asian communities often talk about how their parents pressure them to be like great academics as an example and those kids have no childhood with their parents and they feel neglected from their parents but then americans who um grew up sort of like with loosey-goosey parents and hippie parents let's say white parents and white parents like don't put those pressures on their kids or maybe some of them do but you know what i'm trying to say right i'm trying to like not make it so general but you guys help me out here okay benefit of the doubt give me the benefit of the doubt so like those parents are more like lenient on their kids and they go choose what you want to be like be a be a ballet dancer be a youtuber be a be an artist and like we'll support you you know it's like wow I that's amazing but like freedom might mean people choosing a lack of education which might mean America in general might be less educated because we're more pro freedom and like following your dreams and doing what you want and like taking your time figuring it out and a lot of our parents let us live with them into our 30s and so we run into all these problems where like maybe freedom maybe in a world of freedom people do choose to work less and do choose to be with their family more. Maybe we choose to be less productive, which means like we can't compete in the global market as a country. And like maybe there's a lot of this happening. You know what I mean? Where we can't shoot for an idealistic life where we're all living in Howl's Moving Castle without the war. But like or Miyazaki Sotoro where it's like beautiful and we're outdoors and it's gorgeous. And like we're all like just being nice to each other. You know what I mean? We can't live for that ideal. That's my ideal like nature fantasy. We can't have this. Because we also exist in a bubble as a country and the country is at possible war with other countries because humans in general want to like for some reason take over other people. Like even this the conversation about gender and like should trans people be in sports? Who cares? It's a pretend game. Make a decision. You're a bunch of adults complaining that other adults won't let you play with them. Make a decision about what we're doing here on this planet, please. So, okay, like, we're literally all arguing about, hey, I want to participate in your game over here. And it's like, you can't because you're not like us. And then we're all sitting there fighting with each other. And I think... I think if we really asked ourselves, like, why do we even want to participate with each other? The truth is, is because we live in a utopia idea that we should be together. And I'm I think I'm advocating for if we're all going to play pretend over and over and over and over again, maybe we should play pretend separated. But like together, like let's say America is an example. We're all states. We're all together. We're hanging out. But then we all go home to our respective states where there's like a general theme. Right. California is more liberal. Texas is more conservative. And like maybe in those pockets of conservatism in the privacy of our homes we're having like furry parties or something I don't know or like you know mass like people do Catholic mass in their home sometimes I've had it happen at my house plenty of times my mom's mom and dad's house and that's fun that's like a form of pretend everyone gets dressed up in robes and we pretend like this bread is like Jesus and it's like whoa but like people really believe it so it's like a really big deal and they're emotionally connected to this thing but like when I'm there I'm there as a guest now because I don't believe in it and I still think it's beautiful and ritual is beautiful. But at the end of the day, it's only important to the people it's important to. Like sports, like trans people being in sports. People have such strong opinions about this because it's important to them. Versus I don't have a strong opinion because I don't care. I'm not invested. Don't care. Not invested. Not my not my circus, not my monkeys. I'm not in sports. Don't plan to put my kids in sports. I give, I'll give them skateboards and baseballs. I'll give them access to playing sports with each other. But like I don't see any value in like – you know what I mean? Like, I don't, I know the value. I see the value. I just don't, I think the value you get from being in sports, you can find in other places. So like, I'm going to give my kids options, but like, I'd prefer they not choose sports. It's expensive. It takes a lot of time and there's not a lot of reward in terms of like monetary value, unless you're one of the greatest sports players. Do you get what I'm saying? As a career, it's not, it's not worth the bodily harm necessarily, but if for fun or because it makes them happy and it happens to be a career, that's fine. Oh my God, that was so many words just to say that we're all participating in our own version of pretend and our pretend allows us to think there's value in something because we really feel this emotional connection. And I just want people to just think about for a second, like, are you really feeling something? And if you are, what is it? Like, it's kind of like when you have great chemistry with a really toxic person, it's like, 
is the feelings you're getting the powerful like the powerful impact of those feelings is that what makes it important is it is that what makes things important and good or is it the fact that you're able to to enjoy the moment for what it is or you're able to process it is like not great so maybe you should involve yourself is it just chemistry and my biological entity or are you gonna play pretend and say no this is like the height of what intimacy is and so I'm going to go with it just based off chemistry alone or the top do you guys get what I'm saying like at what point is it pretend and at what point is it real life is the lies we tell ourselves is that the pretend is that the pretend or is pretend something you do on purpose so like if you're religious but you're religious because you believe is that playing pretend if you're in sports because you think it's like the most important thing ever is that is it because you think it or are you playing pretend in order to know to in order to convince yourself it's the most important thing ever? And I think that's what I'm wondering, right? Because I'm advocating for people to acknowledge they know very little and we're still exploring and still discovering what it means to be a person. And I think a lot of people be out here pretending they have the objective answers for all of us, but it's not it's not happening correctly. It's, if it is, it's not it's not really working, though. Like, I don't understand. You know how I said I've been reading Dolores Cannon and, like, thousands of people have this have this story about reincarnation and past lives. But, like, thousands of people in every religion, every spiritual group has similar stories. Maybe it's all real at the same time and that's what's confusing. Or maybe none of it is real and we're all just, like, playing pretend. I don't know. And I think I just want to live in a world where people are more comfortable saying, I don't know. Because that doesn't seem to be the case even though it really should be because we really don't know as much as we think we do. And I think I'm kind of sick of playing pretend and pretending we know. And at the same time, I completely understand why we do it. It's a great way to continue surviving and holding on to hope. But I would argue that I think when you reach like a level of introspection, you kind of are comfortable not knowing. And that's like what fiveness is. I feel like you're super comfortable not knowing because it doesn't, it, it's okay not to know. There's like a great safety in it. Like I said, because I don't know, I feel less violent. I have less desire to like mass kill people out of like a fear. I remember during 9-11 as a, as a Christian Iraqi, you know, immigrant background, we were the persecuted minority in Iraq as like Catholics and Christians. And there's a great fear around Muslims. And like one of the things I always like to remind my brain of is that like Muslims as a whole aren't even that violent nor do the nor does their version of pretend truly pose a threat to me but in small sections of that version of playing pretend it literally does pose a threat and so I think we have to be aware of that right and I don't think regular society wants to talk about that in America because it's like a discriminated minority group but like girl I'm that I'm the I'm the other side of that minority group if anything my people are dying at a much higher rate because like Chaldeans in general we don't have the numbers because we're being killed off. So like that's the thing, right? Is like I don't know if people understand that when you have a lot of those intersections, right? Talking about intersectionality, uh, Kimberly Crenshaw's work. It's like a lot of us have a lot of different stories. And that's what I'm trying to say is like because we have those different stories, we can't all play pretend in the same way. And that brings the chaos, which is why I'm pro pro freedom though because I know I have a limited life on earth and I'm going to die. I don't want to be trapped in your version of pretend. It scares me to be trapped in your version of pretend. And I and I don't know if people understand that. You can take it all you can take take it down to something really simple. Like I don't want to play 20 hours of a D&D game. I will marry someone who plays D&D. I think that's really lovely that they spend a lot of their time being just friendly and playing games with people. I know they're not out there being violent. I'd rather date a D&D player who spends 20 hours a day playing D&D than a person who plays pretend in a gang and kills people, right? Like very different versions, but like in the gang could be anything from like the police gang to the gangs on the street to military gangs to like however you want to describe that version. It's a form. It's a group that could lead to major violence. And I prefer to be in a nonviolent arena, though I think there is a place to kind of balance the spectrum of violence. So like stay with me here. I have four military brothers. I'm not anti the military, anti the police or even anti gang life. Like I think gangs on the streets are a reaction 
to a police state and the police state is a reaction to our fears of needing protection and the military is a reaction to us needing to fight possibly that global community that we're at odds with. So like all of these versions of pretend make sense to me, but they also I think are the reasons we continue cycles of violence unnecessarily because if we really, really knew as a whole billion, eight, seven billion people or whatever knew that we were all collectively the same human beings on an earth trying our best. I just think we would stop playing pretend in such a violent way. And I think we would learn that a lot of the things that we think we know, we just don't. We just don't. Anyways, would love your food for thought. Please um, let me know what you think. Wait, is that my food for thought or your food for thought? I don't know. Would love to hear your thoughts. Sections down below. Please let me know. I would love to talk to you guys about this. I think it'd be so much fun. And I think there's something here that if we explored it in a very open-minded philosophy sort of way, we could talk about the real world life impacts, the real world impacts that we're having on each other um, because we get stuck in our own imaginations about what reality is. All right, guys. Thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. I will see you very soon and hope you have a great day. Bye. Stuck in my head In real life while in bed My belly's being fed And I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.